Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to utilize, or rather set up, a prismatic joint between two bodies. Now if you remember from the introduction video of joints that I have in, uh, uploaded, I described the prismatic joint to be the joint that allows a single body to only slide along a single axis. So you have, let's say, a single box and a static box that doesn't move, or a static rectangle, and you join those bodies with the prismatic joint, and the box that is dynamic, or static, doesn't really matter, uh, it will be able to slide along the x-axis or the y-axis, or whatever angle you give it, um, and it'll only be able to slide on that axis. It won't rotate, it won't turn, and it essentially is, uh, I mean, I guess the rotation is more relative to whether or not the objects are allowed to rotate. Um, but let's get into getting our first prismatic joint set up, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So first thing you want to do is uh, just down here I have a method created called build prismatic joints, and if you want to see the rest of the code up here, I'm just using my uh, game state setup that I created in another tutorial video using a game state manager. And I just have a box D world, a debug renderer, and a target that I have my camera following. And again, I have this camera update method here, um, which is called in the update method, that interpolates to that target body that I want to follow. And then I just have some regular input uh, controls, very, very basic stuff. Um, and if you want to copy this down, you're more than welcome to pause the video and try it out. So. Uh, let's get into actually setting it up now, and um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is, from previous videos, you can probably learn how to create a box uh, in Box2D. Um, you want to have two bodies, a body A, a body B, and I only set their linear damping so they don't get away from me when I'm trying to move them to demonstrate how they slide along their axes. Or axes. Um, so with that, what you're going to want to start with is prismatic joint definition, and we'll just call that pdef for now, equals new prismatic joint def. So there's your object you're going to be working with. Now let's define the properties of the joint. Um, with any joint, there are three main requirements, uh, two of them being fairly obvious, uh, the two bodies you want to join. So we're going to do pdef.bodyA equals body A, as we have up here. And that, these are just public variables that are in the prismatic joint, and most joints have them, I believe, from the superclass joint. Uh, so pdef body B equals body B. Okay, so we have that. Um, and then world.create joint pdef. So those are the three requirements, essentially, just getting your joint into the world and created. And so you'll see here, uh, prismatic joint, you want to get your object, and then you want to define which two bodies you're joining, and then you're going to want to create it using world.createJoint, similar to the world.createBody method, um, as I'm sure you've seen before with where you pass it a body definition object. Okay, uh, so with that and the kind of basic stuff we have set up here. Let's run what we have just to see what that joint did. We'll get in here. And so here's my moving box in the very center of the screen. You can see me moving away and to and from those intersecting boxes. And so I'm going to push on one of the boxes, just going to run into one. And you're going to notice something very interesting when I, when I do that. So just run into it. And you'll notice that blue line. In Box2D, the debug renderer actually renders joints as a blue line. Uh, so now you kind of know what that looks like and what it is. And you'll notice that it didn't rotate, it didn't spin or anything, and it just kind of stayed along that same axis, the x-axis there. Um, so I'm going to try and push it one more time in the other direction. And so I got some speed there, and you can kind of just see I can push both of them, and they just react alongside each other. I'm going to brush up on top of this one and slide it a little more to the left. And as you can see, I can just 
keep going with this joint. But do you know, because they're joined now, I, I can influence both of them just by tapping on one. Um, and that is because they're joined and they've become relative to each other or related in, in one way because of that joint. So um, the reason it stretches out this far and it can just seriously, it, it will really go on as long as you want to push it. Um, let's bring it back here. But that is because we have not set any upper or lower transition limits. And that's the next thing I'm going to cover for you. So um, we have these two bodies, they're joined now, and we have them aligned on their x-axis automatically because of where they were positioned. So let's go back into the code and try messing around with a few of the other prismatic joint variables. So we have our pdef, and uh, there's also this one uh, called collide connected. Um, I, I feel I should probably bring this up. Normally this is default uh, set to false. And what that means is that the two bodies you're joining will no longer collide with each other um, if it's set to false. But if it's set to true, then they'll act just like regular 2D, uh, box 2D bodies and interact with each other the same way. Um, so you know what, maybe I'll just show that to you real quick. Go to true. And you'll kind of notice some weird things will happen in the beginning because it has to resolve that joint. Um, yeah, there it goes. It kind of snapped out of it. So now when I press this one into it, they just push each other um, and it can't pass through anymore and go to the right because of how it snapped. So um, there's that. Just figured I'd demonstrate that real quick, but we want that set to false for now. Um, so let's get into the restrictions in length. And these are really, you, you really should just put these on your prismatic joints just because that's essentially how you're going to easily work with them and manipulate how they work. That way they don't get out of hand and get too stretched out. So we're going to do pdef.enable limit. We're going to set that to true. And then there's another variable, uh, pdef.upper translation. And what this means is relative to where they start on the centers of where they're joined, as in um, when they're originally set up between body A and body B, it joins them both at their centers. So upper translation, let's set this to, we'll just make it 32 divided by PPM, or actually, you know what, I'm gonna make this 110 divided by PPM. I only divided by PPM, so I know it'll be 110 pixels instead of 110 meters. Um, always good to remember that when you're passing data into the box 2D world, divided by PPM, you're taking it out, multiply it by PPM, which is your pixel per meter ratio, which mine is currently set to 32, by the way. Um, so back to this one, we want to set the lower translation to be um, about negative 110 divided by PPM. Okay, so now we've set an upper and lower translation limit, and we've enabled it too. So these won't work unless you enable the limit very or the limit flag so let's run it now and see what's different okay so we got the same kind of setup nothing too different there or surprising now i'm going to push the elongated box to the left real quick okay still kind of going along the same way let's brush it a little bit more let's oh okay so now you'll notice i i can like bounce in between these two and they're not separating anymore. And that's kind of the expectation we wanted or uh, what we had in mind because we wanted to stop it from going forever. Uh, so let's try the right or rather upper translation limit by pushing this box to the right. Kind of brush up on it a little bit and keep pushing it. Oh, there we go. So now we're just bouncing in between them and there's a uh, that lock uh, threshold that we created for it to be able to extend out to. So another thing you can do, um, you know what, let me just check real quick. I believe you can have an upper translation but no lower translation. So something can, that can extend um, forever, but I could be wrong. It might just set it to zero. Um, yeah, I believe it just sets it to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So that's also another thing to know. If you don't set them, they'll just default to zero, and you can just kind of mess around with that, see how far you want it to go. And as always, like I say with Box3D, just really create some things, throw them around, see how they interact with each other until you get the desired functionality you want out of your Box3D objects. Um, so with that, I think I'm just going to leave that here uh, where we were with this very simple prismatic joint. And I think next time I'm going to cover motorizing a prismatic joint to create that kind of hydraulic door shutting system that I was talking about. And you know, I think I have a demonstration uh, on something I was working on. So if we go here real quick, you'll see down in these, these two uh, doors here, I have uh, a prismatic joint actually tying these two doors or these two polygon shapes to these static blocks. And when I press the sensor button, uh, you notice they kind of pull open and close when I'm off the button, which is pretty cool. So um, with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, of course, leave them in the comment section below and like and subscribe the usual. And thank you for watching.